Alright, welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to go through uh, the second half of this 2020 P6 Prelim Exam Mathematics Paper 2 questions, starting from question 12. Please make sure you have your paper and your green pen ready. Let's get started. Now if you do not have the paper or you're trying this for the first time, you may just want to pause the video and try on a piece of paper. In the figure below, A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Now these are important words because it tells us uh, properties of the different shape. So this is a rhombus and what I'll do usually, I will just make sure I remind myself it's a rhombus by using these little lines, I, which I describe as toothpicks to my students in my class. Then, uh, EAF is a straight line, though this is a straight line. BCF is 103 degrees Celsius. BCF, this angle is 130. Angle ABE, ABE is 20. And AFD is 104. So in the first question, we're asked to find what is angle DAF. Now DAF is this angle. So there are a few ways to think about this. You can think about this as, hmm, if I, this is a triangle. If I know what is this angle, right, it's a triangle, right? If I know what's the value of this angle, I can just simply use the property of sum of the angles in the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. I use 180 degrees minus 104 and minus this, and I will get the answer, DAF. But I don't know why is this. But thankfully, I know that this is a rhombus, and therefore these two are parallel lines. These two lines are parallel lines. So that tells me that these two angles add up to give me 180 degrees. So to find this angle, I use 180 degrees minus 30, I get 50. So this angle is 50 degrees. And then I have my triangle, see? Now to find angle DAF is very simple. 180 degrees minus 50 minus 104 and I get this angle. And that is 26 degrees. Next, I'm supposed to find angle FEB. FEB is this angle. Again, let's think. To get this angle, if I know what is this angle, I can use the property sum of angles in a triangle, 180 degrees minus 20 minus this, and I get this. Okay? Or I can use the property of uh, one exterior angle is equal to the sum of two interior opposite angles. I'll show you both ways of doing this. Now, how do I get this angle then? Well, remember, this is a rhombus. So the opposite angles of the rhombus are equal which means this angle is equal to this angle. So this big angle here that I highlighted is 130 degrees. And we found out just now earlier on, angle DAF is 26 degrees. So what's the value of this angle here? So that'd be 130 minus 26. And you have 104 degrees, all right? Now for those in my class who also learn about these different shapes, you have, a parallel, you have this Z shape here, or inverted Z shape here. See, these are also parallel lines. So if this is 104, this is also 104. 104, 104. Okay, now let's try the first method, which is this exterior angle is equal to the sum of these two angles. Therefore, to find this angle is simply 130 degrees, minus 20 degrees and you have your 110 degrees. Is that correct? Ah, oh, so this is 130. This is 130 minus, uh, this is 104. Sorry, 104. So 104 degrees minus 20 degrees and you have 84 degrees. So that's one way of doing this. Exterior angle is equal to the sum of two interior opposite angle. Let me draw it for you to see it here, okay? So this will be what you call an exterior angle. It's outside the triangle. And so it's called exterior, right? Exterior. This is outside the triangle. 
and these two are the interior opposite angle they are inside and they are opposite of this they are not beside they are opposite so this angle A is equals to angle B plus angle C angle A equals to angle B plus angle C so that's one way of doing this another way is now that you found that this 104 let's find out what is this angle on a straight line means 180 minus 104 you will have your 76 degrees here that's the other step, 76 degrees. Then you use sum of angle in a triangle, 180 degrees minus this two, and you get your 84 degrees. Okay, more steps, but you still get the answer in the end. Let's go on to the next question. All right, Mabel had 2.49 kg of dough and Nuru had 570 grams of dough for making buns. The same mass of dough was used for each bun. After Mabel made 50 buns and Nuru made 10 buns, Nuru had half as much dough left as Mabel. So how do we draw this model that shows that the after part where Nuru had half as much dough as Mabel? So if Mabel had one part, Nuru had half. If Mabel has two parts, then Nuru have one. So the model here looks like this. Okay, so Mabel's part would be let's say two, and then Nuru's part is half of it. Right? See, it's half, half of it. Now this is the after model. So what happened before? There were more things. So you see, before Mabel used the dough that she had to make fifty buns. So this was the dough that she used to make fifty buns. And this was the dough that Nuru used to make 10 buns. After using it, I cover it up to show that it's gone. And this is what's left. Okay, Mabel's part that's left is twice that of Nuru, or Nuru's part is half that of Mabel's. So far, I understand the model. Now we go on to fill in the blanks with 2.49 kg of dough. Mabel had this amount of dough at first, so you see this amount of dough, 2.49 kg or 2,490 grams. And then Nuru had 570 grams of dough at first. See, at first, everything here was 570 grams. Now, we will learn algebra, right? So this tells us that we can um, try to understand this in a relationship. So these two units here, plus the dough used to make the 50 buns, is equivalent to 2,490 grams. Let's look at Nuru's model. This one unit here, plus the dough she used to make 10 buns, is equals to 570 grams. So far, okay? Now, let's get rid of the units. How? If this become two units, we can get rid of it, right? So how to get this into two units? Well, I just multiply this by two. Right? I just multiply this by 2, I get 20. 10 times 2 is 20. 1 times 2 is 2. And 570 times 2 will be there are 2570. There are 2 of them. Imagine I use 2 units minus 2 units. I'll get 0 units. 50 minus 20 buns. 30 buns. 2490. Minus 570, minus 570, and we will know that 30 buns require 1,350 grams of dough to make. So to make one bun, it's very simple, 1,350 divided by 30, right, and we get 45 grams of dough is used to make one bun. Right, 45 grams. That's the first answer. The second one, with the remaining dough from both girls. What's remaining? This is the part that is remaining. Alright, this one unit here and these two units here. With the remaining dough from both girls, how many more such buns can be made? Well, we know that to make one bun, we need 45 grams of dough. So, what can we do? So, let's take a look. Huh? So, um, we know that to make 10 buns, it will be 10 times 
45, that is 450 grams of dough. Okay, so in other words, I'm trying to find out, to make these 10 buns here, how much dough did Nuru used? So Nuru used 450 grams of dough here to make the 10 buns. To find, first I want to find out how much dough is left, you see. So four, 550 grams of dough at first, subtracted away 450 grams of dough that Nuru used. This gives me the amount of dough that Nuru has left, which is 120 grams. 570 minus 450 is 120. Then, there are three units here, right? So 120 times 3, I get 360 grams. This tells me this is the amount of dough left from both Mabel and Nuru combined. Now, since one bun requires 45 grams to make, so this is all the dough that is left. So we simply use 360 divided by 45. We have enough dough to make exactly 8 buns. So that's the answer for part B, 8 buns. Alright, let's look at question 14. In question 14, we know the first always must understand the story. Yeah? In this case, the story even comes with a graph to help you understand. Okay, Now, a company offered 60 laptops uh, for a sale. So these are the 60 laptops. Now, and the company offered it at a 15% discount. This means you do not have to pay the 15%. And the sale went on for 5 days. Now, the line graph shows the amount of laptop left unsold at the end of each day. So, at the start of the sale, day 0, there were 60 laptops. At the end of the first day, see, day 1, 56 laptops were left. So, how do I get 56? Because I see that there were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equal parts here. And 60 minus 50 is 10. 10 divided by 2, I get uh, by sorry, five, right? the five equal parts, I get two. So every division here has a value of two. So here is one, two, three. So two times three is six. So at the end of the first day, there are fifty-six laptops left. So how many were sold in the first on the first day? Sixty minus fifty-six. Four laptops were sold on the first day. On the second day, we start off with fifty-six laptops. At the end of the second day. 40 laptops were left. So 40 minus 56 minus 40, we have 16. So 16 laptops were sold on the second day. Let's carry on. On the start of the third day, there were 40 laptops. At the end of the third day, right, we only had 30 laptops. So on the third day, 40 minus 30, 10 laptops were sold. At the start of the fourth day, there were 30 laptops. By the end of the third day, there were only uh, 16 laptops, right? So 30 minus 14 is 14 laptops. So here is the, the final one. Huh? So at the start of your uh, this day, there are 16 laptops. At the end, there were 8 laptops. 16 minus 8, we have 8 laptops. So on which day were the most laptops sold? Clearly, is on this day, all right. This will be your day two, the day with most laptops sold. Now, some of you con got confused and put on day one. Now, it's not day one. Huh? Day one is here. What was sold in day one were the four laptops. This is your day two, all right? Day two is is here. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Right, these are the five days. So this is the start of day one, the end of day one. The end of day one number is also the start of day two, end of day two. Second question. During the sale, the discounted price of the laptops was $1,360. Discounted means the part that he, uh, people have to pay. Don't have to pay 15%, but you still must pay the remaining 85%. So we know that this 85% is represented by $1,360. This is a price of one discounted laptop. So 1% will represent 
1,360 divided by 85 is $16. So 100% refers to 100 multiplied by 16, you have 1,600. So this is the before discounted price. If there's no discount, one laptop will cost 1,600. Okay? So how many laptops were sold without discount? See, yeah? if you add up all these things, right? 4 plus 16... How many discount laptops will score at, so at a discount? 4 plus 16, 20. 20 plus 10, 30. 30 plus 14, 44. 44 plus 8, 52. So 52 laptops were sold with discount. So 60 laptops were there at first. So 8 laptops were sold with no discount. So this is a laptop without discount. 8 of them will bring in $12,800. 52 were sold with discount. This is the discounted price. See? Discounted price. 52 times 1,360, we have $70,720. So in total, what was the total amount of money collected from selling all 60 laptops? Well, that will be you add up these two figures and you have $83,520. Don't forget the units. If it means that the units, your marks will be deducted because we won't know what this number represents. Let's go to the next question. Now, Lilin wants to make 18 identical bracelets and 17 identical necklaces. She has already made 7 bracelets and 9 necklaces using 1,584 beads. The number of beads used in 5 bracelets is the same as the number of beads used in 3 necklaces. Sounds very confusing, right? So let's try to find the parts that we understand better. Now, we know that the number of beads used to make 5 bracelets is the same as those used to make 3 necklaces. Now, bracelets are smaller, right? They go around your wrist. These are called bracelets. Necklaces are usually longer. So to make three necklaces, three long necklaces, you need some beads. And the beads they use is the same as the beads you use in five bracelets. So this is how I come up with the first equation. Okay? Now, we so this is to use this piece of information here. Remember to solve question, we need to use all the information. If you can't solve a question, most likely it's because you didn't use some of the information. This one, I have used it. Next one. I know that 9 necklaces were already made. Already made 9 necklaces. So, to make 9 necklaces, I will need 3 times 3, 9 necklaces, right? I need some beads to make 9 necklaces. And the beads used to make 9 necklaces is the same as the beads used to make 15 bracelets. How do I know? Here, I times 3, I get 9. Here, I times 3, I get 15. Equivalent number, right? So this is the number of beads I use. I need to make, use to make 15 bracelets. So I've used this information here in green. Here. So now I know that, okay, the amount of beads used to make 9 necklaces is the same as those used to make 15 bracelets. So fifth, and 7 bracelets were already made. Now because it's hard, easier for me if I were to add the beads used for bracelet and beads used for necklaces. So I will equate these 9 necklaces, the beads used to make the 9 necklaces, to the beads used to make 15 bracelets. The same number, right? The number is the same. Right? Just used to make different things. So seven brace the beats used to make seven bracelets here. Plus the beats used to make nine necklaces, which is equivalent to 15 bracelets. So the beats used to make this is 1584. The beats used to make this, alright, is your 1584. That's how I get 22. So the beads used to make 22 bracelet is equivalent to 1584. If I don't do this, it's hard to do because then according to the question is the beads used to make 7 bracelet plus 9 necklaces is 1584. Then I will have no I will have two unknowns uh, here. 
So that's why we do this part here. No need to write this. So if I know that the number of beads used to make fifth, 22 bracelets is equivalent to 1,584. The beads used to make one bracelet, which is what the question asks us for. Number of beads used to make one bracelet. That will be equivalent to 1,584 divided by 22 to get 72 brace, uh, beads used to make one bracelet. Next, how many beads Lilin needs to make the remaining bracelets and necklaces? Remaining, remember? She wants to make 18 bracelets. She already made 7. So she needs to make another 11 bracelets. She wants to make 17 necklaces. She already made 9. So she needs to make another 8 necklaces. Okay, this, this part, huh? she needs to make some more. So this, I, this is the meaning of how many beads does she need to make the remaining 11 braces and 8 necklaces. So we go back to the earlier part here. The beads used to make 3 necklaces is the same as the beads used, the number of beads used to make 5 bracelets. And we know that the beads used to make 1 bracelet is 72. So to make 5 bracelets is 5 times 72 is 360 beads used to make 3 necklaces. So to make 1 necklace, we divide by 3. We need 120 beads to make 1 necklace. She needs to make another... Uh, 11, I talk about this just now, right? 11 bracelets and 8 necklaces, you see? Number of remaining bracelets is 18 minus 7. Number of remaining necklaces is 17 minus 9 is 8. So now we know that to make my 11 bracelets, I will add one bracelet needs 72 bits. So 11 bracelets times 72. I'll get the number of bits I need to make the remaining bracelet. And each necklace requires 120 beads. And you make another 8 more necklaces. So 8 times 120. And I add these two figures together. And I'll get 1,752 beads. Right? Let's go on to the next question. Now Mutu had a collection of stamps. He gave 2 ninths of the stamps to his friends. So we have friends. 120 to his brother, his brother. And he was left with three fifths of the collection, which he arranged these remaining three fifths into 24 pages of an album. Album. So all his stamps were spread out among friends, brother, and album. Now how many stamps were arranged in an album? Now Let's take a look. So we know all his stamps will be one whole, right? Think of a fraction. You give us fraction, you use fraction. So all the stamps is one whole. Subtract away the stamps given to his friends. Friends will be 2, 9, minus 2, 9. Minus away the stamp that were left in the album, 3, 5. We have the stamps left for the brother, which is 8 divided by 45. This amount given to the brother. And we know that he gave 120 stamps to the brother. That's why I want to find out the fraction of the stamps that was given to the brother. So I can connect these two together. Then I have this equation. So 8, or some of you might have written 8 units is equal to 120. Which is fine. I just kept the fraction as, as it is. So to find out 1 out of 45, or, or 1 for the feast, that will be 120 divided by 8 at 15, or some of you might have done this in states, which is exactly the same. And so, how many stamps arranged in the album? Album part was 3 fifths. So I need to change this into an equivalent fraction, the same denominator as the fraction used for the brother. I need to change a 5 to a 45. So I change it by multiplying by 9, by 9. So I need to find 27 units. 27 units will be 27 times 15, I have 400 
and 5. So 405 stamps were arranged in the album. Next part, how many pages contain 25 stamps? Well, we can do it this way. Now, let's assume that, because they told us that there are two ways uh, Mutu arranged the stamps in his album. On some pages, he put down 10 stamps. On other pages, he put down 25 stamps. He can't make up his mind, this Mutu. Ayo. So, um, let's assume first, let's assume, use the assumption method. Let's assume all the pages contain 10 stamps. There were 24 pages, okay? Let's say there are 24 pages and he put in uh, 10 stamps on each page. If that's the case, he will need to have 240 stamps. But he has, this is stamps in the album, huh? but we found out, right? How many stamps were in the album? How many stamps were there in the album? 405. So if we put 10 stamps on each page in the album, and there were 24 pages, he will only need 240 stamps. That means there is a balance, a remainder of 165 stamps remainder. These 165 stamps will then top up because now he has all his pages as in only with 10, right? 10, 10, 10, 10 stamps per page. Now he has his remainder. He must redistribute some of them to make up into the 25. So 10 plus what is 25? 10 plus 15 is 25, right? So I need to find out how many 15 stamps I can pull out from this 165. So 165 divided by 15, I have 11. So I know that of all these pages with 10 stamps, he need to add another 15 stamps, 15 stamps, 15 stamps, 15 stamps, so and so forth, to 11 other pages. So there were 11 pages that contain 25 stamps. Okay, so that's how you do this question.